Since the start of the Syrian uprising in March of 2011, it's estimated that well over 250,000 people have died in the conflict, with hundreds of thousands more wounded. Canada has committed over $969 million in humanitarian, development, and security assistance in response to the Syria crisis. More than 4.5 million Syrians have sought refuge in neighboring countries and Europe, and for its part, Canada is set to welcome 25,000 government-assisted refugees by the spring of 2016. Some of the roughly 1,300 Syrian refugees that will resettle in Calgary have already begun to arrive, and private citizens and local organizations alike are working to ensure these new Canadians are settled as quickly as possible. Tonight, we explore who these refugees are, what challenges lay ahead for them, and some of the strategies in place to help them. Hey, Calgary, I'm Kevin Chorney, and this is Calgary Now. I'm sure you're gathered tonight. We're going to be talking about these Syrian refugees that are settling in Calgary. And to do just that, I'm joined by Farah Bors Berjandian, the Great CEO nice, yeah. of the Calgary Catholic Immigration Society. Sir, thanks so much for taking the time to be here. I'm not so sure everyone's familiar with what it is the Calgary Catholic Immigration Society does. If you would, briefly, what is the role over there? What is the mandate? Sure, I think the mandate is very clear. We are here to help newcomers to Calgary, either refugee or immigrants, to really settle and gain a life of dignity yeah. and become part of the Calgary community. That's what we uh, are started with uh, yeah. in about uh, 70s when uh, we had refugees from Vietnam start coming to Calgary. That's the history of organization, the Diocese of Calgary helped to create the organization. I think now we are actually one of the fourth largest immigrant saving agency in the wow. country actually. We have about wow. 240 staff, 1,800 volunteers and we are in Calgary, High River, Banff, Okotoks, uh, so we are quite an organization uh, which we develop a lot of capacity. Again, as you know, yeah. Calgary is becoming a very desirable destination for immigrants that sure. are coming. Last year we had almost 17, 18,000 people that they choose Calgary, migrate from other countries to Calgary from over 100 different countries. Yeah. So that itself uh, is a challenge for the cities, any city. So there are a number of organizations including Calgary Catholic Immigration Society yeah. and we refer to that as a CCIS. Right, right. And that is what we do. We have classes, we have a settlement program, we have a, but one thing unique about uh, this agency is that we actually do a lot around refugees as well. So yeah. about 20 percent of our organization uh, is designed and developed expertise to help refugees and refugees that are coming to our country through government-sponsored refugees and also with the uh, Roman Catholic of Diocese of Cal Calgary, we have a partnership that we also sponsor refugees ourselves and right, that's where right. the, we started with the refugees from Syria. Not-for-profit, a lot of money comes from the uh, Canadian immigration, government of Canada, obviously. Exactly. It's a non-profit organization like many other you know, NGOs and yeah. we fund, pro we get funding from three levels of governments, associations, foundations and also we generate some funding ourselves by providing services that people can afford to pay for it. So it's a very dynamic organization. It sounds like, I think sounds like you, a lot yeah, of work. It's kind of, we have actually quite international reputation as well because some of the practices we do which we'll be talking about yeah. in respect to refugees or integration to labor market is one of the we identified as the best practices so we are very happy with that you know what's excellent uh, to me about the CCIS is that the CEO yourself yeah. of course uh, was once a refugee a refugee as well exactly yes I think that's great you've obviously got some real hands-on experience um, if you would can you tell me a little bit about your path from from leaving Iran sure, to becoming sure. where you are now, uh, the CEO yeah. of the CCIS? Actually, interesting you asked that because I was at the airport when we had 20 refugees from Syria arriving. That was uh, December 8th. So I just was sitting there and looking at the door that they were coming out. Exactly 20, uh, in 2000, uh, 1988, yeah. I walked through that doors myself with my children and my wife wow. as a refugee to Calgary. So I think that was a kind of a reminded me of uh, 27 years ago what happened yeah. when we came to Calgary. It was minus 35 at the time, so that was a, a little, little bit warmer. different. But otherwise, no, that was a bit of an emotional moment, perhaps? Oh, ex exactly. I mean, yeah. when you become refugee, because nobody plans to become refugees. No. I mean, I was a, a naval officer. My wife was a high school teacher. We are non-Muslim uh, from Iran. We are Baha'i by faith. So obviously, the new Islamic government had problem with that, and they right. wanted us to 
convert to Islam, which again, a great religion, but we were Baha'is already, we had a religion, yeah. so we didn't want to yeah, convert. For you, yeah. But as a result, we actually both lost our job, our livelihood, and then even my kids could not go to school at that time. It was six years old and they refused to register with school because they expected me to change my faith. So we didn't do that, so we became a refugee actually. We had to escape Iran yeah. to another Muslim country that they were great, Pakistan, they were amazing, very hospitable country. They embraced us, they helped us. I was there for about 13, 14 months. Yeah. And then through a process, we were very lucky and very fortunate to come to Canada and Calgary. So but it was funny because I used to be a ship officer, a ship captain, and I started yeah. coming to Calgary and started a new life and they joined Calgary Catholic Immigration Society since actually. Yeah. It's an excellent story. Yeah, it is, I mean, an amazing story. Not a whole lot of water out here, but hey, no, embrace yeah. the mountains and the prairies, <laughs> I guess, right? Great, yeah. Uh, growing up in Canada, I mean, it's hard for, for somebody like me to really imagine what the people uh, from Syria have gone through, their experience to date. Uh, I mean, what has that experience been like for these people? I mean, how do they make that decision to leave? Do these people even have uh, a decision to make? It's unfortunate we are advancing in many areas in the world, but when it comes to really the stability of countries, we can see that it is not really working well for many, many people. Yeah. I mean, looking yeah. at 30 years ago when I became refugee and started understanding what refugee is and what people go through, I mean, we only had about maybe 20 million refugees at the time. Mm -hmm. In 2015, according to UNHCR, that's the United Nations High Commission on Refugees, we have actually six zero, 60 million refugees. Wow. So it is really obviously that's a bad bad signal that things are not going well in many many countries so mm -hmm. including Syria and the whole region obviously as you know we know that's going through a huge turmoil and people are really you know destabilizing the governments there's a people that are taking over the you know and are killing people and it is really severe it is very difficult for people to even imagine for average people living Truly in Calgary is, is yeah. very difficult. Even when I came, I remember when I was telling my story to people that I, they denied my, you know, my basic right because I had was born to a different faith groups. Mm. People couldn't understand it, couldn't believe it. I mean, people are, people are now more aware of what's happening there. But a lot of these people, they just lost their life. They lost their families. I mean, we had the family just came last week. The father was just, was killed and the rest of the family were very fortunate not to get killed mm -hmm. when the bomb came in. So it is very unfortunate. I mean, we see things on the TV, but they are 100, 100 times more worse than what we see yeah. because this is only a snapshot that you look at it. But if you have to leave there, you have your loved one there, your children, it, it is just very unfortunate, very, very unfortunate. And when you talk to the refugees, they came, uh, they've been under run for past five years, four years, actually. This is yeah. not a new. No, and I don't think a lot of people realize that. That's yeah. right. That's a good point. We're going to jump to a quick break and check in with our rant pack. Folks, stay with us. I'll just start off by saying I'm um, really, really disappointed to know um, the extent to which people are afraid of the other in this city and across the country. Um, these Syrian refugees are people that are desperately trying to get out of a country that has been ruined. It's ruined. I mean, the, the beautiful cities that people lived in there don't exist anymore because of bombing. Uh, the governments there don't care about the people. It's a failed society and they, they can't live there. They can't, they are, they're not safe, they have no food, their kids have nowhere to sleep. So the idea that these people who are so desperate are going to come to this country and cause chaos here and are terrorists is fantastical and ridiculous in the, the extreme. Uh, just in Canada, the last two terrorist events that happened here were committed by Canadians, passport holding, born here Canadians, who were more crazy than they were anything else. So this, these people need places to come and they should come and they will be vetted by the way. It's a three-step uh, security process just like any immigrant has to go through. I want to touch on what Julie talked about just a little bit later, before we do that though, I mean, who are these Syrian refugees? Are we talking uh, young families? Are we talking uh, people that are educated? Are they skilled? Do most of these people speak English? Okay, I think uh, we all know that there are about 4 million refugees 4. from 5 Syria. Million. Actually, yeah. 4 or 5 million. Yeah. Actually, they are out of the country. There are countries like Jordan, Turkey, and uh, Lebanon. We know that. But there are also millions of people displaced within 
the border of Syria. So it is quite a severe situation. Yeah. So who they are, they are just average people. They are people that they used to have a go to school, go to work, had a wedding, had a neighborhood, uh, they used to play. And suddenly, you know, the whole livelihood has been uh, destroyed by obviously forces, different forces, different group of people that start killing each other and that's created that. Now what we know about the people that have, are coming to Calgary, actually our involvement, Calgary Catholic Immigration Society, involvement with the re Syrian refugee because we work with the Diocese of Calgary mm -hmm. and we actively sponsor refugees uh, from, the, from abroad. This is a 37 years project that uh, this organization Well old machine by now I would think. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly, yeah. so we brought about almost six, 7,000 people in the past so many years, just one organization. So we were at, uh, approached by a lot of people that they had relative, distant relative of friends in Calgary and uh, they were S S uh, Syrian origin and they came to us and they asked for help. Many of them went to the bishop's office and then bishop actually uh, asked me to think about that. Then we had a meeting in 2013, we started actually identifying people and started sponsoring them. Till today, we sponsored over 550 people. 160 actually have already arrived in Calgary. And some of them you won't even recognize. They're just going to school or they're going to work. The children are at school. Mm -hmm. And so this is, mm -hmm. this is the settlement happening. Government of Canada has brought about, about 100 people so far from Syria. So about 200 or 280 people have already settled in Calgary. Who they are, the people that we know, they're average people, the one that been sponsored by private group like ourselves. Yeah. They are mainly people that they are middle class. Yeah. They have uh, education and they uh, basically younger generation. I mean, they got some uh, older folk with them, the parents, uh, they are with them. And unfortunately, actually, the gentleman that arrived just uh, in uh, October actually passed away yesterday. So unfortunately, he came here and he died because wow. he was quite ill and I think the pressure on him was too much. Mm -hmm. So he passed away. So these are the group. And then the other group that the government sponsored refugees are coming, they are more uh, larger families and families that actually are identified by United Nations High Commissioner Refugee for um, more protection. So they need more protection. So they are being identified and Canada is bringing them to Canada. So okay. they tend to be in larger families. Yeah. Yeah. And some of them with a little bit of extra uh, need for extra support. So these are the group we are bringing in. But as far as who they are as a human being, they're like me and you. They just, they, I mean, I have a, a, a Syrian artist. He came here just about a year, uh, a year ago. He was yeah. one of the few arrival. And he's an artist. He's a great artist. He had a beautiful house. He was just had a beautiful life and everything was destroyed. Now he lives in Calgary and he tries to make sense of the new life and yeah, try imagine. to sure. catch up with the new environment. The reason I ask is that I think a lot of people have a misconception of you know exactly what Syria is. I mean, Syria is a nation of relative wealth. It's yeah. not a third world nation where people uh, struggle with language and skills and the rest of it. And I think it's important that uh, you know, Calgarians realize that. Now you mentioned that there is a, a group of people that do need a bit more support. What is kind of the immediate challenge for those people? Usually going from a place that you're familiar with, migrate, or so move from one place to another place, naturally brings a lot of challenges. Sure. Language, culture, family dynamic, income, losing status. So these are something that we've been res well researched and uh, understood by people like us because that's what we do. So this whole global movement, so it is al al about moving, people move. So refugees only are one aspect of that movement. Yeah. So when they come to Canada or when go to Calgary, obviously, regardless of the status are the refugee or immigrant, yeah. they really need to, first of all, understand where they are and be able to do the normal functions, function in the community, to use the transportation, understand the, yeah. uh, you know, the education Nine system, one, one banking system, like everything, just yeah. whatever thing that you uh, and I may take it for granted because it is natural to you. So they have to learn that, that's, that's the basic thing. The second thing is that actually engaging the community, building social capital. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a concept of mm -hmm. building social capital of course. because people, lose everything. They come here. When I came here, obviously, I started from scratch. I didn't know that many people. So I had to start again. The same thing. So you start a new life. Now, refugees going through that hardship they had, obviously, there's a cooling period that they go through just because it is just, uh, it's unbelievable how uh, it impacts the children, the 
the families when yeah. you have a home and suddenly you don't have anything. I think anybody can appreciate so that. So it is yeah. just, just it's hard to even imagine, hard mm -hmm. to explain to that. Even I went through that myself, but I have a hard time explaining to people what mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. means. Because it's a really a personal journey and everybody goes through it differently. Yeah, sure. So when they come here, obviously, again, I have to tell you, Calgary has been a great city when it comes to uh, responding to the refugees' need. Refugees, actually, I can tell you this, they have done much better in Calgary than most other cities. Is that so? I think it is. And what do you uh, attribute that to? I think there are a number of reasons. I think we have a, obviously be, a good economy. I mean, we have been enjoying a good been economy better, in the past yeah, many sure. years. For yeah. Jobs are available. Mm -hmm. And also, it's a new city. And I remember when, when, when I came here in 1988, the city was about, what, 550, 600,000. Oh, right. Now it's double. So yeah. there are many, many new people in this city. So being new is not something that no, you don't that's feel right. a stranger. We, we, Calgary sees about 30,000 new residents yeah. every year. Right. Exactly. So, so that is itself one aspect of that. There are many opportunities. And also, uh, average, I mean, people are educated. They are younger population, so they are That's right. obviously We're a fairly young city. Yeah. more open to changes, so they are not worried about changes. And there is a history of Calgary. I think it's a small community, although we are now being seen as a large city, but still we have that uh, really community spirit, the small community spirit. I can tell yeah. you, I mean, yeah. I cannot say enough how good the community has been when we go to them. We've been enjoying having 1,800 volunteers. I mean, that's a big number, right? So you look at that, yeah. and this is not something that is, we always have that. We never had a problem going to people. I mean, even with the case of uh, sponsoring refugees, if, if you have noticed, Calgary is actually the third largest uh, city that have uh, no, uh, as far as the sponsorship goes first is uh, Montreal because okay. you have a huge Armenian community in Montreal and then southern Ontario and then Calgary our number of private sponsorship in the country for Syrian one of the is the third highest That's commendable based on yeah. uh, our population and compared to those two regions you just mentioned exactly we're gonna jump to another rant pack break folks stay with us I think that this uh, issue surrounding the Syrian refugees has uh, gotten out of hand. I think uh, it's the responsibility of politicians to stand up and dispel a lot of these, uh, whether it be rumors or misinformation or myths or whatever you want to call it. I think there's so much bad information that uh, has come out because of it that we need these leaders to actually stand up and uh, tell people that they're just unequivocally wrong uh, or categorically wrong, whatever it is you want to say. I just think that there's way, so, there's way too much misinformation that uh, we need to start quashing that so that we can move forward constructively. Mm -hmm. 